So we've changed locations now. Now we're in a 2,800 square foot modern American home. We have four bedrooms, we have a master downstairs, and we have one child downstairs. We have a stairwell that takes us to two other bedrooms upstairs. So we have five people who live in the house, mom, dad, and three children, ages eight, 10, and 12. This can be any home in America. So what do you do should you become a victim of a brutal home invasion? Weapons are the first thing that comes to my mind to start to equalize the force that this animal has brought to bear. So consider your types of ways that you can defend yourself. Now, first of all, what comes to your mind? Having a gun. Okay, there are a multitude of different guns out there. You may have a grandfather shotgun. You may have a tricked out tactical version of some type of rifle or shotgun. You may have a pistol. That pistol may be semi-automatic with 16, 17 rounds in it. Or you may have a little 38 five shot revolver. That's one way to defend yourself. But what if you don't have a weapon? Do you have a bat? Do you keep a bat by a back door, front door? Do you have a knife? Do you have a two by four? Do you have a heavy cast iron pan? What you're looking for is something that can act as an equalizer. Now let's go over some of these different weapons. Now, in a typical home, we have children, right? And those children play sports. So what I see a lot is baseball bats. With a baseball bat, yeah, you probably could hurt somebody pretty good by using it. But let's look at this. In order for me to effectively use this baseball bat, I have to get close. I have to bring that bat all the way in. Well, I don't want to get that close to that guy. I certainly don't want any of my family members getting that close. So while a baseball bat's a great option, just realize that you have to close the distance on that guy. And that could be bad. Now think about this too. You're probably only going to get about one good swing. What can you do in one swing? Well, EJ, I'll hit him in the head and I'll hit him in the heart and I'll stop his heart or I'll knock him unconscious. Okay, well, good luck with that. Because he's going to try to defend himself too. He's going to throw an arm up. He's going to turn his shoulder into you. He's going to duck his head. Now remember, he got up this morning knowing that he was coming to your house to do this. You're waking up out of a dead sleep. You're groggy. You're in your PJs. And now you're going to come in and be Babe Ruth. Well, if that's all you got, well, then I'm good with that. Well, there's some other options you should consider. Now, we've got a lot of guys that carry pocket knives with you, right? I'm gonna bring a pocket knife with me. I've got, a, I've got a steak knife or whatever. Well, I've got a pocket knife right here. This actually is a pretty cool pocket knife. Big, thick, right? But just like that bat, a pocket knife, I have to get even closer. So I have to close distance all the way to here. And again, I don't want to do that. But if this is all that I have, then bring it and use it. But understand, he's going to defend himself too. But have you ever heard the whole story? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. May luck be on your side. So if you do decide that you are going to bring a gun, there are different types of guns out there. And they all have their different uses. And there are pros and cons. And just like we saw with the baseball bat and the knife, one of the cons is you're not going to get very many times to use it because you're going to be actively fighting him. Okay, With a gun, you've got to realize that there is over-penetration that can occur with the round that you're using. Now, there's a misnomer out there that I can use a shotgun and I don't even have to aim because I'm just going to point at him and pull the trigger and he's just going to obliterate into nothing. And it doesn't happen like that, guys. 
A shotgun pattern at 21 feet is only about yay big. It's really no bigger than the size of a big coffee can lid. So yeah, it's not the size of a pinky hole, which would be your nine millimeter. You're covering that much more distance, okay? But it's not chest wide, okay? And what you're talking about is I don't even have to aim, okay? There's instinctive shooting, which means when I point the gun at somebody, I'm not focusing on the rear sight and the front sight and gaining a sight picture. I'm just pointing the gun towards the threat and pulling the trigger. So the misnomer is that I can use a shotgun, okay, and I'm gonna use a technical term, intuitive, instinctive, intuitive, whichever way you wanna go with it, instinctive shooting, I'm gonna point that gun with him and he's gonna go down. Okay, understand that you're gonna be under fight or flight. Your autonomic nervous system is gonna kick in. You will lose all manual dexterity. You'll go back to caveman hands. Maybe you forgot to switch the safety. Maybe in your haste, you forgot to rack around. Maybe you forgot to chamber around in your pistol because you don't leave it loaded. These are things to consider. Also, shooting a gun inside of a house will make you go deaf. It's loud on the range. If you've been in one of those static stalls and guy next to you and you're pointing down and you're shooting, you're shooting, Okay, you've got ear protection on, right? You've got eye protection on. You'll have none of that here. So as soon as you crack a round off, everyone in this proximity is deaf. These are just things to think about because you don't think about them when you go to the gun store. I'm just gonna buy me a gun and I'm gonna use it for self-defense and the guy behind the counter told me it was awesome. But did he tell you that you will not be able to verbally and communicate with your children who are in the house because you're so deaf, you couldn't even hear what they were saying anyway. They're deaf, they can't hear you. Now, I advocate using a gun. But if you don't want to use a gun, we've got a plan for you as well to use some type of bat, some type of blunt instrument but understand, you have chosen to close the distance with that guy to get close and meet him face to face. You just need to understand those are your options. So in this scenario here, we have a master bedroom that's downstairs. I have a child's bedroom that is across the main living area downstairs. Through the main living area, I have the front door and the rear door where you saw me pick the bat up. I have to make it out of my bedroom into the main living area to check on the threat. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about the distance that it takes to get from your bedroom to the main living area? We talked in the, earlier about outside, how they would come into the house. They could use a window. They could use a door. This is all probably going to go down at night. So how long does it take you? How many steps? And can you do it at night? And then in the dark, where is the relative direction to your children? How long does it take me to get upstairs? And when I go upstairs, who's to my right? Who's to my left? Which door is a bathroom or a closet door? Oh, EJ, I know all this stuff. I know. Do you? Do you? Under panic and stress, will you not make a mistake? These are things for you to consider. And if you have to use a baseball bat, if you have to use a knife, Understand that you have just closed the distance, and should you be lucky enough to get to your children before he does, you now have a child that is in your backswing. You have a child that is within stabbing distance, because that child is going to cling to you for life. And instinctively, you're going to grab that child, 
and you're not going to let anything happen to it. So if you're grabbing and holding on to a child, how are you swinging a bat effectively with one hand? How are you taking care of the guy with a knife? And have you trained with one hand to shoot a pistol? We have this this crazy idea that I'm going to be in a in a gun range stall when this is going to go down. I'm going to be able to stand up and load my weapon when I'm ready. I'm going to put on my earplugs, my, my, my eye protection, and I'm going to press out. And I've set that target at the distance that I want to shoot it at. And I'm going to aim in, get a great sight picture, and I'm going to slowly pull the trigger to the rear end. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tom, come here and look at this target. Look how great I am. This will be over in 45 seconds. Get your mind right. And get ready to take care of business.